Hey guys, I'm Chris Black, and you're very well. Welcome to Friday Frightworks. And this week, let's poll conversions. Superior or sacrilegious? <music> Now there are very few album covers as iconic as Jeff Beck's Blow by Blow, John Collier's expressive painting of Jeff on stage armed with his Oxford Les Paul with a wrap over tailpiece and two humbuckers. Now somewhat naively growing up I just assumed that this was just a regular Les Paul that you could have bought off the shelf back in the day but of course that's not quite the case. Along with Peter Frampton's Phoenix, these two Les Pauls are arguably the two most famous examples of Les Paul conversions but what on earth is a Les Paul conversion? Now in short, it's a Les Paul that's been modified, or converted if you will, to the specs of another Les Paul. Wrap over tailpiece removed in place of a tunematic and a stop tail, or P90s routed for humbuckers, or gold finish removed in place of a burst finish. Now given the recent proliferation of burst conversions, you would be very much forgiven for thinking that this was a rather new phenomenon, but as the saying goes, there's nothing new under the sun. As evidenced by Jeff's Oxford Les Paul, which despite only being bought by Jeff in 1973, would have actually started life as a 1954 gold top Les Paul with P90s and a wrap over tailpiece before it was routed, extra route added essentially for humbuckers by strings and things in Memphis, Tennessee. Same goes of course for Peter Frampton's Phoenix, which we're unsure whether that would have started life as either a 54 or 55 Les Paul custom. Either way, it would have had a P90 and a staple pickup in the neck, but at some point prior to his acquiring it in 1970, it was routed for three humbuckers. But why would you do this? Why would you go to the extent of heavily modifying a Les Paul when you could just go out and buy a new one with the specs that you wanted? The answer, of course, you couldn't. Now, it's important to remember that as much as the Les Paul status today is virtually unparalleled, this hasn't always been the case. In fact, it was actually something of a commercial disaster, being discontinued by Gibson in 1960, only eight years after it was introduced in 1952, of course, being replaced by the SG. Enter. Eric Clapton, Keith Richards, Mike Bloomfield, Peter Green, Billy Gibbons, Jeff Beck, all of which acquired bursts in the mid to late 60s and very much laid the foundations for their iconic status. The problem? Gibson had stopped making them, so getting hold of one, especially here in the UK, really was no mean feat. However, in 1968, Gibson answered all of our praise, or at least tried to, by reissuing the Les Paul but not the burst, the one everyone wanted, instead opting for a 56 spec P90 gold top and a rather obscure two pickup black Les Paul custom. It would actually take them until 1976 before they would finally relent and reissue the Sunburst Les Paul standard, but those guitars were a million miles away from the lightweight, resonant, lively Les Pauls that Gibson were making in the late 50s. In 1980, a better attempt would follow with the Heritage series, but in the intervening years, it's really easy to see why people turn to a little bit of creative woodwork to try and capture some of that magic of those golden era Gibsons. And as such, so many gold top Les Pauls from this era now exist in something of a state of limbo. No longer gold tops, but not really bursts, which is where today's guitar comes in. 
Now this particular Les Paul, currently for sale here in the UK at ATB Guitars for a five or short of 30 grand, actually started life as a 1956 gold top. Two P90s, two pneumatic bridge, stop bar tailpiece, before being routed for humbuckers, stripped of course, and resprayed in a sunburst finish by Yuki McClure of PGV, player grade vintage, again here in the UK. Now amongst the telltale signs that it's not actually a burst, aside from its somewhat explanative serial number, is the fact that the center seam is not so centered. Of course, Gibson only really focused on center seaming their maple tops from 1958 onwards when that seam was visible. Of course, up until that point, it had been covered by gold paint. Now, in the grand scheme of conversions, a 56 to a 59 conversion is a relatively straightforward one, with the only real invasive work required being the extra routing for the humbuckers. But, of course, people haven't stopped there and have tried pretty much everything over the years with varying degrees of success. Now, because of the neck angle issues which plagued Les Pauls in the early 50s, converting a Les Paul to a burst really isn't a straightforward task, and as such, I've played some examples in the past which have been dogged by structural and playability issues. I've actually seen some people try to turn Les Paul Juniors into bursts, which again, structurally, are totally different beasts. Now, thankfully, this isn't one such example and plays incredibly well. It's also got that characteristic PGV faded burst colour, which you might recognise from my Greco, which, again, funnily enough, was finished by Yuki. Also has one original PAF in the bridge and a clone in the neck, original 50s and early 60s hardware and electronics, and a set of 1959 clues on tuners. The neck does feel as though it's been shaved slightly at some point, which, although unexpected to begin with, really doesn't notice after just a few minutes playing it, and crucially, sounds amazing. As you can imagine, as much as the motivation behind burst conversions in the mid to late 60s or early 70s may well have been practically driven, it wouldn't be long until they would become economically driven as burst prices started to go through the roof in the mid 1970s. Gold top prices, however, stayed relatively stable, and as such, people left, right, and centre were attempting to turn a quick buck 
by turning their gold top into a burst, even going so far in some cases to try and disguise their work, adding a new Santa scene maple top and a new serial number. There are countless cases of people having bought bursts, only to find out some years later that they in fact have a conversion worth maybe a tenth of what they'd anticipated it's worth to be. There's also the moral issue of whether it's right to needlessly convert a perfectly good gold top into a strange burst gold top hybrid or amalgamation. But thankfully, this practice does seem to have died a little bit of a death in recent years, presumably in the wake of gold top prices soaring, thus negating any real kind of major profit margin to be had. But to think of all the great gold tops which were needlessly butchered over the years, especially when my dream guitar, dream guitar spec is a 54 or 55 gold top, is quite sad. That said, there are some beautiful conversions out there that have been incredibly well executed. Joe Bonamassa, of course, owning several. So what's the consensus? Now, needless to say, if you search online for Les Paul or Burst Conversion, you will find a lot of very strong opinions on the subject. It's either a smart, inventive way of getting a taste of the Holy Grail. Same wood, same construction, same materials, same hardware, same electronics, same pickups as well for a little bit of extra investment. Or it's sacrilege and punishable by an eternity spent in palm moot purgatory. I guess, honestly, I kind of lean towards the latter, but I guess there is consolation to be had, as I said, by the fact that this practice does seem to have died off in recent years as gold top prices have soared. As I said, the profit margin just really isn't there anymore. But either way, I guess it is a valuable lesson in not being burst tunnel visioned, as us less porn enthusiasts can be on occasion. And to that end, I'm going to play you out now using exactly the same track as the start of today's video, but with a guitar from 1955, without those venerated PAFs or without that famous sunburst finish. Hope you'll agree, doesn't sound too bad. As ever, I'm Chris Buck. Thank you very much for watching. This is Friday Fredworks. Please subscribe at the bell icon if you haven't already. And I shall see you next week for a slightly less contentious episode of Friday Fredworks. Cheers, guys. Take care. I'll see you soon.